Are you needing a case that prioritizes both style and performance? Well, look no further. Introducing the H5 Flow Compact Mid Tower Airflow Case from NZXT. So inside the box, you've got, well, a manual. A manual that's that big is pretty much as big as the actual case itself. It's double sided. I suppose it's got plenty of information. But a lot of the writing is that small, you'll need a magnifying glass or even a phone to take a picture of the information and then enlarge it. So you might as well just use the QR code in the first place. Otherwise, inside the box, you had a few bits of foam, a bit of plastic it was wrapped in, and obviously the case itself. Where can you go and meet hundreds of people just like you, strengthen existing relationships and forge new ones with vendors and distributors and meet some of the biggest names in the industry where you can go and see the newest tech and services that you need to make your IT business grow. And there'll be thousands of pounds worth of prizes up for grabs. Then what's more, you'll get that for a quid. TechMax 2023 will be on the 23rd of June at Magna Adventure and Science Centre near Meadowhall in Sheffield. This event will be over four times larger than last year's event, and this year's event will incorporate a live tech awards, dedicated meeting rooms, demo and interactive areas, and up to 800 other techs just like you. Get registered now at tftmax.com. So let's have a look at the case itself. So we'll start off with the glass side, but first of all, this is the mesh version of the case. They call it the H5 Flow. They also do an elite version as well. Now they haven't sent us the elite version, but from what I can see, it's very similar to the H7 series of the elite. The only difference is, is basically this bit here from the elite model, instead of being a mesh front, is a glass front. And then there's an air intake just on the right hand side down there instead of on the front. So obviously it can get airflow. Generally, if it's anything like the H7 Elite, it is a slightly noisier case because the where the airflow is, it has to strain a lot of air through that airflow, which is quite small and it makes a bit of a noise doing it. But again, that all depends on the fans and configurations and everything like this. But today we're looking at the mesh. So first of all, we've got the glass side here. As you can see, it's full glass. It's not tinted or anything like that. It's not plastic, it is there. To remove it, it's just one thumb screw, which I'm not a fan of, to be honest, because on the H7, so it's Big Brother, all the panels you can remove on the case without using any screws or thumb screws that just pop off. So I would have liked to have seen that on this case as well. There is a piece of plastic on the glass to protect it. So I'm just going to peel that off now. And as you can see, it looks fairly nice. Case, this is a white version. They do a black one as well. And as I said, from screw, you just undo that and then the side should pop off. It's a little bit tight. Just watch it though. It doesn't automatically fall off because it could do. It is held in sort of by a ledge there, but obviously we're being slightly top heavy. It can potentially just fall out and the last thing you want to do is break it. Otherwise on the side, you can see here, it's not a full glass side, isn't it? it doesn't take up the, all the way down to the bottom. You have got a white strip here, which does cover up where the power supply is. So you won't be able to show off your power supply. So if you've got a decent power supply in there, no one is going to be able to know because they're not going to see any information about that at all there because you just cannot physically see it on the front of the case you've got this mesh area here which will pull off it is not screwed in or anything so it will pop off which is good so you just pull it there and it will pop off that makes it easy for you to clean as well you've got your dis dust filter in there which you can separate if you wished with ease so that is pretty good and then you've got mounting options for fans. It doesn't come with any fans on the front already, unfortunately. So that means no RGB fans or anything along the front. Obviously, adding a couple of fans in there will up the price of the actual machine if you obviously build in it. That's the either here or there because it depends on how you want it setting up. But if you're having a decent machine, I would advise obviously sticking some fans in the front. And again, this metal panel, which is here, is basically one piece from the side and it is not removable. It does have the NZXT logo there, which is sort of like a two-tone white, so it doesn't stand out the most, but it is there. 
if you can see it. Right, so to put the front back on, pretty straightforward. Just slides down like that and then pushes and clips in. So let's have a look at the side and the back. So the side first is just a standard panel, like on most cases, held in with two thumb screws. It will just slide off. We'll take a look inside it in a few minutes. On the back itself, you've got a fan what's pre-installed there. Doesn't look like it's RGB, it's just a standard fan. You've got obviously your cutout for your IO of your motherboard. And then you've got seven expansion slots there to put in obviously a motherboard of a decent size so you can obviously install your graphics cards and any other expansion cards you've got. Sound cards, network cards, stuff like that, if anyone really uses sound cards these days. And then obviously you've got your opening here, which is where your power supply will be. You'll install that from the reverse side of the motherboard. And then you can obviously unscrew this here to open this area up so you can easily install all your cards and stuff like that. So to the top of the case itself, you've got your power button, which I'm guessing lights up around the button itself. We'll have a look at that in a few seconds. You've got your USB type A connection. I believe that's USB 3.2 Gen 1. Obviously, if you're not sure what that is, double check that, but it's basically high speed USB, normal stuff like memory sticks and stuff like that you plug in there. You've also got a USB type C, that's USB 3.2 Gen 2. Yeah, they do get complicated, these USB generations and so forth. And then you've got a standard audio jack, which you could use for microphone, headphones, obviously combination, if you wanted to. Now, the top panel itself doesn't come off, which is a shame because on the bigger brother model, the H7, it does and makes installing things like water coolers and stuff like that very easy. So the only thing what is removable here is the actual mesh bit on the top. So this will keep dust from getting inside your machine or out, depending on how you've got your configuration set up. But it allows you to clean it and so forth and does make it look a little bit better than just leaving it with little holes and gaps where you can mount different fans and stuff like that. We'll come to mounting and stuff like that in a few seconds. So on the bottom of the case, the bit what you're probably not going to see much of but it's not too bad actually. You've got feet, which are plastic, which raise it off the floor a good distance. So if you have got it on a carpet, unless it's a really deep pile carpet, then you should be able to get a good airflow. But as always, we always suggest you put them on a flat surface, not carpeted, because that can restrict airflow. Now, they are rubberized feet, which will stop it sliding around, which is really good. And there are two slidable dust filters on the bottom so you can pull that one out with ease and clean it which is really good i do like that design and then one on the front which you do normally see them on the back the one on the front you don't usually see on most cases the reason being there is a fan on the inside of the case a weird angle we'll talk about that in a few seconds but obviously you're going to be getting fresh air coming in from there it's going to keep the dust out obviously Anything that's got dust filters on, you need to make sure you keep them clean, especially if you've got pets, animals, any smokers in the house, anything what's dirty or a business or anything like that, because these things can get blocked up very fast and very quick. And obviously, if the air's not getting in, your power supply's there, that's going to get hot and go, oops, and go bang. And the same for, obviously, the air intake on the front as well as on the bottom here as well. If your air can't get in the machine, it's going to overheat, lower performance, and potentially cause problems down the line. So let's talk about fan and radiator options on this case. So first of all, on the back, it comes pre-fitted with a 120 millimeter fan there, as well as a 120 millimeter fan down here in this, I don't know, it looks like a urinal to me or possibly a drain pipe or something like that. It's, uh, it's a strange positioning to be honest with you, but I know it's designed to blow air up, but it still looks strange, but anyway, that's 120 centimetres there. You could potentially swap that out if you wanted with another 120 if you wanted. On the top, you can fit two 120 millimetre fans as well. And on the front, you can either fit two 120 millimetres or two 140 millimetres. Bear in mind with the max GPU length, which we'll get to in a few minutes, is if you're having fans, depending on how you orientate them, as in do you have them more towards the front or on the back or radiators in there, 
it will reduce the length you'll be able to have your GPU depending on the size. Now regarding water cooling, you do have a few options. You could potentially fit a 120 millimeter water cooler on the back, in all honesty. If you're only having a 120 mil water cooler, you might as well just stick with an air cooler because there's very little difference, if any at all. Uh, on the top, you can fit a 120 or a 240. You can't fit anything larger, so if you're wanting a 360 or a 280, not going to fit. On the front, you've got a few options. You've got 120 millimeter, 140 millimeter, 240 millimeter, and 280 millimeter. So that's the biggest you can go is 280 millimeters, but it does give you the room there to do it if you're wanting. Again, if you're going to have probably part of the radiator on this side, depending on how you're going to do it, push pull configuration it may block up a little bit of the airflow coming from that rear fan down there. Now inside, if you're wanting a CPU cooler in there, you've got a maximum of 165 centimeters clearance from the motherboard to the side of the case. So if it's 170 or bigger, you're gonna struggle basically. So the max GPU clearance is 365 millimeters. So that's from there to there. Obviously, that's if you don't have any radiators or anything blocking it. This side, obviously, that's going to reduce the size as well. Unfortunately, if that's going to be the case, you've got your front radiator clearance is 45 millimeter, and you've also got cable management size of 23 millimeters on the back, which we're going to look at in a few seconds. Now, on the reverse side of the motherboard part of the machine, you do have a little cardboard box, which in that box, you've got a few cable ties there, which is nice, as well as a number of different screws, which is good as well. Would have been nice if the cable ties, rather than being plastic, were Velcro ones, so they could be reused, better for the environment and so forth. But again, it's better than nothing. Now, you're probably thinking storage options. Because of this fan here, there's nowhere to put hard drive. Well, you can actually fit a three and a half inch drive in here. That's your traditional size of hard drive. It would attach to this area here. You basically take this screw out here, this thumb screw, this panel comes off. You screw your hard drive to that, fit it back in, and away you go. If you don't want a traditional hard drive in there, the three and a half inch type, you can actually fit a two and a half inch hard drive or two and a half inch SSD there instead, and another one there. So you could have two two and a half inch SSDs if you wanted, but you obviously you wouldn't be able to put that three and a half inch drive in. Again, they're getting less and less common these days, especially in gaming computers, and in more, more likely with you using potentially NVMe drives on your motherboard, you're probably not even gonna use those connections, but you, it's nice to have an option there if you did. Next thing to come to is cable tidying. There's lots of areas where you can actually hide the cables, keep them neat. Would have been nice if there was another option probably up here, a bit like this. And you've got Velcro here, 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 as well as a bit there to keep the cables nice and tidy, nice and neat. And there's that plenty of room, so you can put lots of cable in through there without an issue. You can hide the cables behind these bits and so forth. And it allows it to tie down very nice very neat and I must admit I do like NZXT cases or at least the recent ones like the H7 and this H5 where they have done a really good job with the cable management on the back and that's one of the good things. Obviously you've got this opening here which the cables will go through to the front so for example your 24 pin cable or your 6 slash 8 pin cables go into your graphics card can go that way if you're not going up through the bottom there. Obviously, plenty of room for your power supply there as well. Shouldn't have any issues there unless you're getting a really oversized power supply, which I wouldn't suggest in a case like this anyway. And it's got lots of room to keep the cables hidden if you haven't got a module or one. Again, unfortunately, you can't see the brand of your power supply once it's in there. So you can't show it off if you've got something like a, I don't know, top of the line NZXT one you want basically to show off. Look, I've got NZXT power supply. No one's going to know basically because it's hidden. So just bear that in mind. Cabling, all the cabling is black with the exception of the fan cabling, which is white with black ends to it. Unfortunately, the fans have only got a three pin fan connector on there, so they're not PWM. PWM, if you didn't know, basically means that it can adjust the speeds of the fan a lot better than the standard three pin. Unfortunately, they're not the best, the three pin connections. To be honest, I tend to find they can get quite loud, the fans, because they don't know exactly 
or how hot things are all the time and the motherboard can't control them as well as the PWM connections. Now, cable-wise, the rest of the cables, so USB free connection, that is all black, obviously a blue connection on the end, which is standard these days you've got a nice black cable for your front panel. It's nice to see that it's all in one unit rather than the power, the reset and so forth. It's all in one connection. So you can just plug that straight in your board and not worry about it. I remember the days where each individual cable had to be connected up, which that's a long time ago, but uh, it's nice that they're actually doing it in one block, a bit like they do with the USB headers. Then on top of that, oh dear, we've got the HD audio, which has got multicolored sachet packet, rainbow colored connections. Everything's black booted until you get to there. This bit's going to be sticking out on your motherboard, so it's going to look a little bit of a mess, to be honest. It would have been nice if they'd colored all that black. I know you could paint it, put some isolation tape, insulation tape over the top of it, or even mark a pen over it to make it look black. But again, it should be in factory not multicolored to be honest with you it's one of the biggest issues i have with cases these days is they're generally i'm guessing using old cabling and connections and they just can't be bothered to cover it up or boot which is a bit of a shame you've also got your usb free header there so that's like 3.1 gen 2 usb c and so forth that's that connection that will plug into your motherboard so that's your usb type c connection and then on top of that, you've got the other fan cable, as we said, from that bottom one, which as you can see is there. Looks like a traditional fan, what's been screwed in, but it is one of those things where it's sort of like got a shroud on top of it to make the airflow push up into your graphics card or components inside your machine, which you can swap out if you wanted to. But otherwise, plenty of room there. Really good cabling. Can't complain about the cabling. And it looks pretty good, to be honest with you. You can't really complain too much about this case, apart from, as I said, would have preferred PWM cables and then this to be blacked out or booted or something to cover up those nasty multicolored cables. So in conclusion and testing, so testing first. Unfortunately, the thermals on this are absolutely appalling if you don't add extra fans in there, which is a shame really, because they've made it this flow case, but they've put no fans or very little in the way of fans in there to make the air flow through it. So you have to spend extra to get that good performance. For example, we tested this on a 12700K processor and a 3070 graphics card, and we found there to be a 10 degree difference just on the processor, 13 degree difference on the GPU when there weren't fans in the front so as soon as we put two 140 millimeter fans on the front of the case so just behind here the temperatures dropped on the cpu by 10 or over degrees and on the gpu around about 12 to 14 degrees depending on the testing we were doing so that's a huge difference so i would suggest and well i wouldn't suggest i would really recommend if you are planning on getting this case you do add some extra fans in I know it's tempting not to add them in. You think it's got good airflow, but if there's nothing sucking anything in, nothing's going to be coming out the other side. So you need to make sure you add more fans. And we see it quite often where people don't add these extra fans and then they get high thermal temperatures in there, which then obviously causes the machine to either crash or underclock itself to keep itself cool, which means then you're not getting the full performance out of your products. So the actual conclusion itself. So don't get me wrong, you have got that bowl fan or whatever you want to call it at the bottom, which is blowing air up into the case, which is a good idea. But in all honesty, on its own, it does very little. You really need to team it up with those extra fans. Now, cable management wise, this thing has got brilliant cable management. There's plenty of room there. Velcro, tie bags, all sorts in there. And they even supply extra plastic cable ties as well if you wanted i can't fault the cable tidying options of this case same with the h7 we reviewed earlier absolutely brilliant for what you're getting in all honesty and i wish a lot of other manufacturers would do the same because amount of times we find cases where i've got very little room for getting cables around or if you do it looks like a rat's nest back there and it looks a complete mess so Next option is obviously storage. I know more and more people are going down the route of NVMe 
or M.2 drives and even two and a half inch drives, but there isn't much in the way of options for other storage if you wanted it. And to be honest, that's really up to you. But if you're wanting, let's just say, one three and a half inch hard drive, that's your traditional type of hard drive, and one two and a half inch SSD, you're gonna be fine. But if you wanted two traditional hard drives, tough luck, you ain't gonna fit it in there. Now, the reason because of this is because of that bowl fan they've put in there. That's why you'd normally have a hard drive cage Unfortunately, because that's there, you haven't got much room, unfortunately, which is a shame, but it's also an advantage as well, because not everyone needs to add a store, extra storage in these days. A lot of motherboards give you option for two or three, in sometimes cases four NVMe drives. So you've got plenty of options in your machine for storage. So unless you're wanting to do lots of data backup or lots of data editing and stuff like that, then you'll probably be fine. And in all honesty, if you're doing that amount of stuff, you'd probably be best getting something like a NAS system with some sort of RAID option to back up your data to make sure it's nice and secure and obviously nothing happens to it. So one of the other issues we got was the cooling on the top. If you wanted to mount the radiator on the top, for example, the one we used, it's actually from Be Quiet Rough rather than NZXT. Basically, there wasn't enough room up there. So we wanted to put a 240 mil one, even though it says you can fit one in there, you can. But the problem is it was coming into contact with the motherboard and the RAM. So we couldn't actually do it unless you go out and actually buy a thin radiator, then you may struggle. Same with fans. You've got to make sure they're quite thin for it to be able to fit up there. Otherwise, you're going to struggle. So you haven't got much clearance there at all, which is a shame. So the bottom fan was designed for the basically elite version, as we've, as we've said. But it only comes with that fan as your intake and one for your outtake. And in all honesty, both of those fans don't seem to be the quietest in the world. I can hear it right here blowing into my ear. And it is actually quite loud. Would be nice if they did have a PWM connection on the fans so the fans could adjust the speed better depending on the temperature inside the machine. But overall, it's actually a good looking case. If you add more fans in there, you do have a good few options, but you are limited, as I said, with the top, with the amount of room it's got, and you can only go up to like a 280 millimeter rad if you're going for the front, no 360s or 420s even on the front. But in most cases, that's more than plenty for most people. So if you're wanting a decent sized, or should I say, a well-equipped, good-looking mid-tower case, then, well, that's probably for you, especially if you're into the NZXT ecosystem, you love their products, then you're going to love this case. But just bear in mind, if you're wanting to push it a little bit more by adding lots of storage, or you want extreme cooling, then this may not be the case for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and know I did. Why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here or this one just down here. Otherwise, you can give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment below. Let us know what you think and we'll see you next time.